forget to memorize this and write it 15 times. Welcome to the coolest, hippest half hour of fun on TV. This is Brain Stew with Jennifer Pulley. Coming up next on Brain Stew, we'll meet some mammals that are quite fishy. And then we'll meet Monica and Lisa, two rather large mammals that walk softly but carry large trunks. Plus, an exciting experiment you can try at home. And then we've got Hey, I'm not going to tell you everything that's coming up. You better stick around to find out what's cooking on Brain Stew next. Hey, welcome to the show. My name is Jennifer Pulley, and I'm one of the few, the proud. I'm a school teacher. Your homework is to memorize this and write it 15 times. Well, not exactly like that. But I teach kids just like you every day. You know, the coolest thing about animals is that they're divided into two main groups, vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates have a backbone, and invertebrates, so they don't. Some examples of vertebrates include mammals, fish, reptiles, amphibians, and birds. Today we're going to talk about the animals that are mammals. Animals, mammals, and does that rhyme? Okay, anyway, did you know that you are a mammal? I'm a mammal. Yeah, well, a mammal is a warm-blooded vertebrate that has hair on its body. You know, like cats and dogs and people and like the seal here. Oh, get some sun, boy. Mm-hmm. Another characteristic that mammals share is that they breathe air. <gasps> or oxygen. My dear. Hey, I have some friends here at the Virginia Marine Science Museum that say they can take us on a trip to show us one unusual mammal that many people think is a fish. My friend Alice. Hey Jen, how are you? I'm hanging. How are you doing? Good, good. You know, dolphins are so cool. They I mean, are. Why are people so interested in this animal? Well, uh, I think one reason around here, particularly because we have so many of them in the summertime, but also because they're very curious animals, and also because they're uh, they're mammals similar to us. Why are dolphins considered mammals, not fish? Well, dolphins are considered being mammals because they do breathe air, much like you and I do. Mm -hmm. uh, they are voluntary breathers, whereas you and I are involuntary breathers. They have to think about breathing. Uh, they're also considered to be mammals because they're born live, like uh, children are, and uh, they're also warm-blooded. So uh, those are some of the characteristics that do make them mammals instead of fish. Do they breathe through their nose? No, they don't breathe through their nose. They have what's called a blowhole on top of their head. That makes it very easy for them when they're swimming through the water so they can just pop their head out you know, for a very short period of time, blow the air out, take a breath in, and keep going. I was wondering, how do dolphins communicate? Well, they communicate with each other through a series of clicks, uh, kind of like a clicking sound. Do that quite well. <laughs> Years of practice. <laughs> uh, but they also use to, um, to navigate through the waters and to locate prey, they use what's called echolocation. Huh? Echo meaning sound and location to find. And what they do is uh, the dolphin's head, on the top part of their head, it's called a melon. And what happens is this echolocation vibration goes out from the melon and will bounce off things in the water to help them navigate. And then when the sound, when the vibration comes back in, this is the lower jawbone. And what happens is you can see it's, where it's hollow. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's hollow. And what happens is that sound vibration comes back in and creates a vibration in here that goes into their inner ear. And that's how they're able to find out what's out there. And they can tell 
what size something is, what shape it is, how far away, how close it is. So do they use their eyesight at all? They do use eyesight some, but when they're looking for prey or navigating through the waters, it's the echolocation that they use. It's, it's a more accurate. Than their eyesight? Yes. We were out there, I saw these dolphins, they were splashing around, rolling over, doing all these, what were they doing? Well, dolphins naturally are very playful, but what you saw out there is they were actually mating. Uh, this is their mating season. Hmm. And we also saw an awful lot of young dolphins out there. And one of the ways that you can tell dolphins are very young babies, or what we call neonates, is that they have uh, kind of creases or stripes on their bodies, and those are called fetal folds, because when they are young and they're, uh, before they're born and they're inside their mother, they're kind of folded up. Oh. So it's uh, when they come out, they've got those creases after being in there for uh, almost a year. They're really fascinating creatures, and I think uh, all of those reasons are why we're so interested in these animals. Yeah, they're great. They're they great. Are. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot for your time. Well, I'm glad you guys could come out and join us on this dolphin watching. I'll work on my clicking. Okay, okay. you do that. <laughs>
Well, we're here at the mammal house. What a perfect place to start, I figured. And uh, we were talking about the largest mammal that walks the face of the earth. Okay, any, anybody? Suggestions? Guesses? Anybody, anything? Anyone? All right. If you guessed a giraffe, you're wrong. A kangaroo? Wrong again. Zebra? A wascally wabbit? <laughs> a giant anteater? A wascally rabbit? <laughs> a big eared bat? Blah, blah. All right, ready? I'm gonna do it this time. No laughing. A wascally rabbit? Well, if you guessed elephants, you were exactly right, 100% correct. I'm here with my friend Heidi. How you doing, Heidi? Good, and yourself? Good. I'm, who, who are our friends here? This is Lisa, and that's Monica. Okay, and obviously they're elephants. And tell me what makes them mammals. What makes these big guys in mammals? Well, they Girls. have hair. Uh, they are warm-blooded. They have a four-chambered heart. And they give live birth. Where is their hair? Well, I see a little bit of it on their trunk. Where Lisa is probably the hairiest 24-year-old elephant you'll see in captivity. Lisa has longer hair than I do. You could braid that. <laughs> yes, you could. <laughs> what does an elephant use this trunk for? They show affection with it. They uh, pick their food up with it and put it in their mouth. They drink with it by sucking it into their trunk and blowing it into their mouth. Um, what they can they pick up with, with it? it? They could pick up a watermelon. They can pick up a bowling ball. She can lift two-thirds of her total body weight in the lower one-third of her trunk. What is her total body weight? Almost 10,000 pounds. You also said something about uh, they have a four-chambered heart. Now, I know from being a teacher that our heart, a human's heart, is about the size of my fist. Elephant's heart, I can only imagine. Their heart is large. And what about in comparison to their brain? Their the heart brain bigger is, or smaller? It is smaller. The heart, the brain is smaller than the heart. Mm -hmm. Although they do have the largest brain of any land mammal. Wow. Elephants do, wow. but it is actually smaller than their heart. They're the most intelligent of all four-legged land mammals. They have a, a social structure that begins with the matriarch and ends with the, the old or the sick and the babies. Is there any way that you could show us on uh, Monica or Lisa where their organs are? Stretch, baby. Move over, stretch. Move over, stretch. What a good girl! Good girl! Okay, so now you're gonna draw the uh, where the lungs would be, or okay, the Monica heart. ears. Steady. The lungs appear, and they breathe oxygen, similar to us. Yeah. Okay. And the heart, Monica ear. The heart is about. Well, can't see it. <laughs> like, what? Like, what she's like, see? what are you doing? <laughs> the heart's about here. <laughs> the lungs That's good. <laughs> are about there. Now, if she doesn't move her ear, we'll be just fine. <laughs> Steady, baby. I'm sorry. We shouldn't win. All right, come on. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yes, you're a good girl. If elephants are so big, how come I can't hear them walk? They have five toes. The things that we see, those rounded, those half moon things, are their toes? Yes. That, okay. Yes. Okay. An elephant, if you saw a skeleton of an elephant, you'll see that they actually walk on their toes. And as they put their foot down, the pad expands around 
their toes, taking the weight of the elephant. They're the largest land mammal, but you, they're very quiet. So the ground's not going to go. No, they're actually. It's like they're actually walking on pillows. Uh, Heidi, I really want to thank you for letting us come and, and meet your friends, Monica and Lisa. Um, I've really learned a lot. I hope you guys have learned a lot um, about these mammals, and they're just fascinating. Well, thank they're you. Just fascinating. Thanks a lot. Okay, when Monica's not eating peanuts and doing tricks, she's painting. She goes to art class and uses temper paints. Here we see some of her artwork that she has done. I find this amazing, of course. She did this with her trunk. And I've been told that these would look great with a mat around them and hanging over the couch. So that's where they're gonna go. Hey, I'm here with my friend Nicole, and she's a swim instructor and a lifeguard here at the yes. Norfolk Y. And you know, we've been talking about dolphins okay, sure. as mammals, and we're mammals. We all we know all that. Yeah. Tell me how we're similar to dolphins in the sense that we both swim. Well, our lungs can only hold but so much air. So when we swim in the water, we have to put our face in the water so we can go even faster. But we have to come up to breathe. You know. We don't want to hold our breath too long so we can pass out, so yeah. you have to hold your breath, you have to come up for air, so just like dolphins, they hold their breath for a while, then they come up for air. Now dolphins swim because they got them, all right? They yeah. live in the water, okay? We don't sure. have to swim. No. What are some reasons why mammals, or us, humans, swim? Well, the first reason is physical fitness. People want to stay fit, they want to keep their muscles toned up and everything like that. There's also a lot of fun in the water. Kids love to play in the water, they like to have games and they love to do just play around and splash around. And also to keep cool in the summer. It gets really hot in the summer, so you want to stay cool, you want to get in the water. So. Can you only swim in the summer? No, no. There's many facilities with indoor pools, so you can swim all year long. There's also all types of water activities like water aqua size, um, water arthritis, um, just swim team, just for the kids. There's just just the pool itself. What are the health benefits of swimming? Okay, swimming, you work every muscle in the body. Okay, the, the water, it helps you move easier. Plus, you know, you, it builds your cardiovascular endurance and it yep. builds your muscle endurance. Okay, increase and get your heart rate up and right. all, that, yes. all that stuff. Okay, Miss Swimming Instructor, tell me when people should start swimming. Children, when should you start swimming? Okay, well here at the YMCA, we start classes as young as six months. Okay? Six um, months? Yes. Uh, we introduce the children to the water, get them to build their self-confidence. We also have classes for preschool age, teenagers, middle children. We also have adults that come in at night and swim. So it's never too young and never too old to learn how to swim. What, what are some of the things that you actually teach? Well, I teach them, I get them introduced to the water so the children can be more comfortable so they can learn how to put their face in the water. I also teach stroke techniques, how to swim, how to move your arms, how to breathe, how to float on your back and everything like that. All right, so if I wanted to go swimming right now, mm -hmm. what would I need? Well, all you need is a suit, a pair of goggles maybe, if your eyes burn from the chlorine, yeah. maybe a cap because your hair is long and you don't want to get your hair it in is, the face. It is. Um, a positive attitude and just come on down. We'll help you if you need some lessons or just come on down and swim if you know how to swim. What? One third of all youth ages 10 to 18 do not engage in sufficient physical activity to provide aerobic and health benefits? Get swimming! So what are you sitting there for? Get up, go swimming. Let's go, take a lesson.
did we strain your brain? Hope you got it right. Anyway, for those of you who want to drop me a line, grab a pen. Because here's where you send your comments, questions, or ideas. Just write me, Jennifer Pulley, in care of Brain Stew. P.O. Box 300, Norfolk, Virginia, 23501-0300. Or, if you have access to a computer, you can find me at WTKR.com forward slash Brain Stew forward slash. So grab a pen or a mouse and get in touch with Brain Stew. Here's a really cool... Here's a really cool experiment to see how elephants use their ears to cool their bodies. Now I'm going to need you to hurry up and go grab a 3x5 index card, a bowl of water, and a few paper towels. First thing you do is take the 3x5 index card and fan your arm about 10 times, 4 inches away. Do you feel anything? <laughs> yeah, it's getting kind of cool, but not that cool. Is that good? Now the next thing we need to do is get this paper towel nice and wet and then wipe it on your arm. Now take the index card and fan your arm a few more times. You feel anything now? It's getting cooler. I know you can't see the results, but I'll tell you what I felt. The reason it was cooler when you used the water on your arm is because the water evaporated from my skin. Evapor what? Evaporation. Evaporation is when a liquid turns into a gas. The water takes energy away from the skin when it evaporates, causing the skin to cool. Elephants use their trunks to spray themselves with water, then they fan their bodies with their large ears. The fanning of their ears, like the index card, increases the flow of air across the skin. The moving air speeds the evaporation of water and aids in the cooling of their skin. Thanks, Jenna, for that evaporation experiment. You guys try that one at home. What a ton of information! Remember, you'll be able to find books like these at your local library, and some libraries even have a computer room so you can access the World Wide Web. How do you find out? Just go ask your local librarian. They're very anxious to help you. Whoa, look at the time! This half hour flew by! Whew. You know, no rest for me though. I'm off on another brain stew adventure. As for you, I hope you had fun, and I hope you learned a little bit more about mammals. For those of you who want a list of the resources we use, just pick up the phone and call the Central Library in Virginia Beach. Or if you have access to a computer, you can find me at my web address, wtkr.com forward slash brainstew forward slash. Got a list of all the resources, it's there. What's that you say? You don't have a computer? No biggie, pick up a pen and write me at Jennifer Pulley in care of Brainstew, P.O. Box 300, North of Virginia. What's this? 23501. 23501-0300. I can't memorize everything. So oh, gotta run. Listen, gotta go. Got places to go, people to see, you know, important things to do. Gotta fly, gotta fly. Oh, you know, before I go, I do need to thank everybody that helped me with the show. I mean, there's so many people that really helped out. So thank. Oh, I really wasn't talking about you. Hey, yo, where are you going? I'm still on, I'm still on. I'm running, but I want to see you next time on Brain Stew. Next week. You never know where we'll be. Gotta run. Bye. Efficient aerobic activity to produce, I don't know what I'm saying. Really? <laughs> right. What's she doing when she when she does this? Besides, <laughs> besides getting fresh with you. She's trying to eat the chalk out of my pocket. One third of all children ages 10 to 18 do not engage in sufficient sufficient. Here's a really cool. Alright. To provide aerobic activity? Well, as you probably figured out, I'm here at the zoo, the Virginia Zoo in blah, blah. All right, thank you. A wascally wabbit? <laughs> I can't do it without laughing. All right, ready? I'm gonna do it.